No one cares if you have to retake the MCAT again. Don't feel like you're doomed. And if you're angry with yourself, or maybe you're angry with like the double AMC for putting more physics on there than you wanted there to be, you just gotta let go. You've gotta move past it. The reason you have to let go is that those feelings don't help. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John. I'm a second year medical student. I am currently at the top of my class in medical school and I failed the MCAT three times before I scored in the 90th percentile. Let me show you what I did differently the final time around. So let's dive into some actionable steps to help you achieve your goal. But if we are going to let go of that anger and that disappointment in ourselves, then we've also got to let go of some excuses. It was hard for me to swallow that I did poorly on this test, even though I'd been doing really well in school. But the reality is that I messed up. I clicked the wrong answer over and over again. I didn't prep the best way possible. I sold myself short. I skipped days. You gotta accept that you made those mistakes and you've got to say, all right, I'm just not going to make them again because this is, this is a big deal. If you don't pass this test, then you can't get where you want to go. So the first step to improving is figuring out what the heck went wrong to begin with. And unfortunately, the AAMC does a really poor job of helping you out with that because all they give you is your score report. So you get your overall score, which I guess the national average is like a 500, 501, and then you get your subscores. So you get a score for chemistry and physics, bio, biochem, cars, and psych -soch, broken down. And that's pretty much all that they give you. You have the error bars, but they don't really mean anything to you. So that doesn't feel like much, but let me tell you what you can take from it and how you can make some changes to improve your score based off of that score report alone. Now, I haven't mentioned it in this video yet, but I was a professional tutor for years. And so retesting with students, whether they had been my own or whether they had been students that came to me after they had failed with another tutor or program, it's a pretty common occurrence. So let's take a look at that score report. If you scored below a 125 in any of the three science sections, you have content gaps in that section. These may not be 100% true for everybody, but for the majority of the students I've dealt with, you have content gaps in that section. Now, if you have a science section score that is at 125 or right around that, and you want it to go a couple points higher, I want you to consider adding two things. The first is going to be a high yield science review for that section. And the second is going to be practice questions. Lastly, if your car score is at a 125 or higher, you want to get a couple more points, then it's very likely that you're just going to have to practice more cars. If you have an abysmal car score and it's like a 118 or something like that, then you really need to learn strategy and maybe even consider doing some basic grammar practice. It sounds silly and almost a little condescending, but I'm, I'm being serious. It really does help. You'd be surprised. In everyday language, we don't speak the same as the writing style of the MCAT. I'm, I'm, I'm from the South. I'm from the Deep South, and we definitely don't talk like that. So doing some basic grammar review or maybe even some practice, while it may seem silly, will actually take you a long ways. Okay, so that's it for the score report. You've taken your notes on what you need to improve on, what you can take from that score report. Now I want you to take it, and I want you to throw it away because you're done with it. Just act like that test never happened. So now that we know those weaknesses, we know what we need to improve at, how do you improve at them? I'll give a couple blanket statements. If you need to improve your content, if you had significant content gaps, just consider redoing your entire content approach. My favorite way to do that for free is using Khan Academy alongside the IFD plus Onking High Yield Deck. I made a video to that, I'll include it in the description. But if you just need to patch holes or you need to get some high yield knowledge or maybe even you are a person that has significant content gaps but you're taking the test again in like two or three weeks, then I want you to consider doing a high yield sciences review. Maggie, who is the other tutor on this channel, and I wrote a really solid high yield sciences guide where we took and we spent all summer talking with ourselves and a couple other professional tutors about what are the most common topics that are tested on the MCAT and how are they tested. And we wrote them out in a more digestible fashion and we, we paid some illustrators so that we could illustrate it. So it's a really good book if you are looking for a high yield summary. Another alternative is the Kaplan Quick Sheet. I don't think that they are quite tuned to um, everything high yield. I think they have a little bit of extra noise, but it's a great alternative and it's currently free. So make sure to check that out as well. My last blanket recommendation is if you know that you have a weak point, whether that be a science or whether that be math, you've got to patch it immediately. You've got to stop 
hoping and praying that it's not gonna pop up on your test. And that goes doubly for math. We have a lot of math videos on our channel where we walk through some of the more common math equations and we also have a math ebook that I'll include in the description as well. The second step to acing your retake is to create a schedule. Now that you've got some rough goals for improvement, you've gotta create a schedule that's gonna give you time to get through all of the material and to practice questions. I can't say that enough. You've got to do a ton of practice questions. You gotta make sure that you're gonna give yourself enough time to properly do this, considering the fact that you're also a human. You gotta give yourself time for socializing and some people are working and sleeping is important and stuff. But what's most important is, is sticking to that schedule. There are several schedules that'll work for you, but none of them will work if you don't stick to it. And a consistent schedule is also gonna help you avoid burnout. So consider it kind of like a fitness routine. Um, if, if, you, if you work out and you eat right, today and tomorrow, you will not see results the following day. But if you do it for a week, for a month, you start noticing results. There are several diets that are gonna work for you, but none of them are gonna work if you do cheat days. It's the same way with studying. You've just gotta remain consistent and you will see results. The third step to getting closer to your goal MCAT score on a retake is to utilize more practice exams. The majority of the formal research around standardized testing shows that taking more and more practice passages is close to directly correlated with scoring higher. Meaning the person that's gonna take a million practice questions is going to score better than the person that takes a thousand regardless their content background, regardless how smart they are. Familiarity with the exam has so far been the number one predictor of success. It's not the only thing that you gotta do. You still gotta know the sciences, but that is the strongest predictor. So I would say take as many as you can, but you need to take at least five, preferably 10, honestly. I make sure that I took all five of the double AMC exams, and then you'll have to start dipping into different third party exams after that. So here's some quick tips about taking practice MCAT exams that I shouldn't have to say, but I will. Number one, don't Google answers. I did it the first time around, it was stupid, and then I failed my MCAT. Don't do it. Number two, spend more time reviewing the test than you actually spend taking the test. If you wanna do well on this test, you've got to understand basic passage scaffolding and trends for how they ask questions. And I can teach those to you, but until you make the mistakes, it's really difficult for your brain to fully wrap around it and to figure out how to see them in the future. Watching our passage breakdowns and, and some of the strategies that are on our channel is going to help you see that there are these scaffolds and it'll give you some templates for progress, but until you see the passages and you make the mistakes and you make the corrections, it's gonna be really difficult for you to truly understand how the MCAT tests, which is the benchmark for who gets to go to medical school. Tip three, lean on double AMC exams. Third parties are great and each of them has their strengths, but the double AMC are the people that write the real MCAT. You need to lean on their resources. All five of their full links are good. All six, if you include the double AMC sample exam, their CARS Q pack is to me the closest thing to the CARS on the real MCAT. And the official guide is really good as well. So I would work through all those if you have the ability and the financial means. If you don't, make sure to apply for the FAP assistance loan. Tip four, take at least five, but preferentially 10 full length exams. If you've already taken all of the double AMC exams, I would retake them. I don't think that you'll remember every single question. I know that I've retaken some of the double AMC exams three or four times, and I still don't make a perfect score on all of them. So at the very least, take FLE 4 and FLE 5 because I think those are the closest predictors to what the real MCAT feels like. And then you can, of course, move on to some third-party resources after that. Tip 5, this is not necessarily about your full-length exams, but it's about section banks. Section banks are really, really helpful. I'll be making a video soon about how to learn from UWorld, which is something that I do every single day when I study for medical school. But if you can't afford UWorld or you don't want to spend the money on it, I think Jack Weston has a free section bank. And... It's definitely not as good as you world, but it is a lot freer. Now, the fourth thing that I wanna tell you is exactly what I realized I had to do when I opened my score reporting in for the second or the third time, and I realized that I was real far away from where I needed to be to get into medical school. You might just need to start from scratch. That's what I had to do. And it sucked, and it hurt, and it was difficult, but I'm really, really glad I did it. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is that if you start from scratch, it's a lot faster this time around, and it's a good bit easier because you're kind of building on what you have already learned. You're building on that foundation you already made. 
The other good news is that we're here to help. So make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, that you are a member on our Discord channel, and that you're checking our website often because we've got a lot of things in the works that are going to help us make our goal and our dream and our mission of making the field of medicine accessible to anyone that's willing to put in the work. We've got a lot of stuff that's going to make that come true. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're telling your friends. Make sure you're telling your advisors. We have this goal and we're not stopping until it's done. The fifth and final step is to seek help when needed. If you're struggling with a particular subject, do not hesitate to seek help, whether that be some kind of professional tutor, or maybe even you're just commenting on one of our videos and, and asking for some feedback. Being able to identify something that you suck at and finding someone that can help you patch that hole is not a weakness, it's a strength. And it's that type of humility that really only comes from confidence in yourself and your ability to improve and competence as well. So if you're curious, if you know you have a problem and you're asking, should I invest the time? Maybe should I invest the money in a way to improve? You've got to bet on yourself and you have to invest in yourself. Every time you have to retake the MCAT, it's $350. Every year that you're not a doctor, it's six figures. So bet on yourself. And if you know that you need help on something, then make sure to go get that help. So to wrap all this up, failing the MCAT is okay. It's something that a lot of people have done. It's something that a couple of us have done two, three times. But it's really important to forgive yourself and kind of let go of some negative emotions and also push excuses out the back door as well. If you're trying to retest and you want to improve your score, then make sure to focus on analyzing your score report, creating a study schedule based off the notes you took from that score report, taking a ton of practice exams, investing in yourself for the help that you know that you need, and if necessary, start from scratch. You may have to allow yourself to invest in some purchases that you feel are necessary for you, whether that be your world, or maybe it's, maybe it's our high yield MCAT guide or our math guide, or maybe it's a full program through one of the big names. I don't know, and that's going to be different from student to student. But whatever you need to do to get into medical school, just go ahead and do it. Let us know in the comments section how we can help. Like the video and remember that identifying an area for improvement is a type of strength that can only come from humility and confidence in your ability to improve. Thanks for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.